Okay, the steps to make a chisel. Um, firstly, you need to select material. It's normally, let's say, roughly rectangular. It might be round even. Neck in with some fullers, top and bottom fullers. For me, it's under the power hammer. For the, a convict blacksmith, it would be on the anvil with a striker and a top and bottom fuller. I'd say a good striker with a big sledgehammer. Um, it wouldn't be that much different to what I'm doing, I'd say, probably twice as long on the anvil. Um, you'd, ha you'd have to be really working, um, I think, the, you know, these sweating convicts in the Australian summer. Um, it's definitely much, much easier with a, a, you know, one person and a, and a power hammer and the right tools. And then probably using the same fuller, fuller out one side of the material to make a big feathered um, triangle, basically. Pinch out the material. And what, with a fuller, the material spreads on either long side. So you can control how you spread the material with the actions of the fuller. Okay, so you flare that out and then using the step in the anvil or maybe a swage block, pressure it down so it starts to cup and then you hammer the edges and it, it sort of coerce the material into um, rolling into a socket. Okay, so flare out the socket with the fuller, roll it into a, uh, a, well, a socket shape, basically, and then fire weld the, the edges together. And that could be the same for a whale harpoon or a, a wood chisel or 
um, a Viking spear. Nothing really much has changed for a long time with different shapes in material. Slightly offset. Let's get a heat. Maybe a bit of this. Roll the socket, you've welded that, and draw out the body and you could make, then make it into a, um, you could shape it into a, a, a spoon, chisel, or um, you could even turn that into a bill hook or whatever sort of tool you wanted, maybe a long scythe. Um, just hammer it out. In this case, we've tapered it down this way, but kept it parallel. Hold again. Grind it flat. Just mark it. Then uh, heated it up to till the material becomes non-magnetic. That's normally above 723 degrees. For some, it's a, one of these magical numbers. Quench it out, and that makes the material really, really hard yet brittle. So I'm just I've heated. Heated up the uh, steel to till it's become non-magnetic. I've quenched it out, and now it's really, really hard, but not very tough. So, of course, that's on fire now. That's terrific. Um, so now I'm going to sacrifice some of my hardness for toughness and, and I'll use the tempera colours to uh, tell me what temperature the material is and when to quench it. So because it's a cutting tool, I probably want to go for a brown. Uh, it's a wood cutting tool. So you can see that brown strip along there. Once that gets to just just next to the edge, I'll quench it back out again and stop it there. You can see it's sort of stretching out the temper colours. Can be a bit of a drawn out process. But they're starting to run now. You can see the brown stretching and the tan stretching.
any second now. I call this an interrupted quench. So you're using the residual heat in the body of whatever you're making to draw the, the temper on the hardened edge. In a modern industrial setting, the chisels that you buy at Bunnings say they'd heat the thing up with induction uh, heating. Um, then they'd you know, quench out the end section or quite a bit of it all the way out and then they'd put the whole 2,000 chisels at a time in a temper oven and bring them all to exactly the same temperature, digitally controlled. Bit of a difference. Get the garbage off there. There we go, it's got a, it's got a tan, just a touch more. A slow temper is a good temper. And this is been drawn quite slow, that's good. Okay. So that's it there. So by putting it back in the oil, we're, we're stopping its, uh, taking the heat out of it. We're stopping any more heat coming to the edge. We're freezing it off with that grain structure. And just for appearance sake, I'll quench the socket too. There we go. Might even flash some of the oil off it. One heat treated chisel. You can still see the temper colours in there. It's that easy.